Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sin. I confess, to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary and the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any belonging to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he journeyed, he approached Damascus, and suddenly a light from heaven flashed about him, and he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. And the men who were traveling with him stood speechless, hearing the voice, but seeing no one. Saul arose from the ground, and when his eyes were opened, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And for three days he was without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple at Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Here I am, Lord. And the Lord said to him, Rise and go to the street called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas, for a man of Tarsus named Saul. For behold, he is praying, and he has seen a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him, so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints at Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who call upon your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen instrument of mine 
to carry my name before the Gentiles and kings and the sons of Israel. For I will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias departed and entered the house. And laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road by which you came, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes, and he regained his sight. Then he rose and was baptized, and took food and was strengthened. For several days he was with the disciples at Damascus, and in the synagogues immediately he proclaimed Jesus, saying, He is the Son of God. The word of the Lord. Catch to the world, proclaim the good news. Go the Lord all you nations, acclaim him all you peoples. Go out to the world, proclaim the good news. Strong is his love for us, he is faithful forever. Go out to the should suffer and rise from the dead, and so enter into his glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. At that time, the Jews disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who eats me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not such as the fathers ate and died. He who eats this bread will live forever. This he said in the synagogue as he taught at Capernaum. The Gospel of the Lord. One of the interesting things about sacred scripture is no matter how familiar we might be with it, and I I make no claims to any great familiarity with large chunks of sacred scripture, but even those of us who know it best will still be struck from time to time by how words, passages can suddenly deliver fresh insight, new meaning to us, 
Generally, we can never exhaust the depth of meaning in the text of the sacred scripture, and this is because it's the Lord's book, it's God's book, and what God communicates to us is in there, and it's designed by God. Therefore, we can always find fresh insight from it, at least fresh to us. But one of the things that struck me in this famous story of St. Paul's conversion, the conversion of Saul, is that when Saul is on the road to Damascus and the risen Lord appears to him, he tells Saul, why are you persecuting me? Now we're quite used to hearing that, I'm sure, but if you pause and think about it for a moment, it's not the risen Lord as such that Saul has been persecuting. It's the believers in Jerusalem and now those in Damascus. It is, if you like, the church that Saul has been persecuting. So why then does the Lord say, Saul, Saul, why have you been persecuting me? <coughs> well, if it's the church which Saul has been persecuting, and it's the Lord saying, why do you persecute me? The answer is because the church is linked to the risen Lord. There's a connection between the church and the risen Lord, such that persecution of the church is persecution of the Lord. In effect, the church is the mystical body of Christ. Persecute the church, therefore you're persecuting Christ. But once we realize this link, this close connection between the church and the risen Lord, then we have to also think, what sign does the church give? Because as linked to the Christ, the sign which the church gives is a sign about Christ. Just as we heard in the Gospel, sixth chapter of John is often called the Book of Signs. The people listening to Christ can't quite get what the sign is. That can be true also today. We as church give sign of Christ and we have to give the best sign which we can give on the basis of the gifts we've received. Fortunately, those gifts are great. We receive the living food which our Lord offers us in the Eucharist and thus makes us able to represent Christ to the world in the best way it's possible to do. This morning then, as we reflect on the conversion of Paul and continue through our Easter journey, let's pray that we as the church will be the best witness to Christ that we can be.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Yes, we go on forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to lord you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfilment in the reality of the cross and by commending himself to you for our salvation showed himself the priest the altar and the lamb of sacrifice therefore overcome with paschal joy every land every people exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we set 
celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome in the light of your peace. Have mercy on us all, we pray, and may the blessed Virgin Mary, our Lord. Blessed Apostles, and all the saints of these who survived the nations, we may pray to be your heirs to be done all of you, and may praise and glory of you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
your Son commanded us to do. 